trademark and protect my intellectual property. Because if I'm the first person that put this, these big wheels on this car, others around the world are going to see that and say, I want to do the same thing. So what are they going to do? They're going to call the guy who did it first. And they're going to say, I'm going to say, hey, well, I got the whole kit and I got the blueprint to do it. So give me 5,000 bucks and I'll sell it to you. They're going to say, cool, give me 10 of them. Yeah, I built Camaro for a living. Those were 26. Those were 30. If you can build a car, you can build what? A truck. And a monster truck. Yeah. It's the same principles. A couple of things are different. So one thing about the auto industry, you can go anywhere with it. It's not just about changing spark plugs and figuring out why they're making a the noise. It's about learning how to take these cars apart and fix them and build them. These guy right here will say, I will fly you around the world to help me make sure this truck stays number one. All because you know about all the auto industry and fabricating things. What happens when you see an old rusty car like that? Laying on the ground, no wheels on. Throw it away. Okay. There you go. Put it together on this one. And this product in the video shoot. See how the whole thing changed? Any questions? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody's trying to get into this industry. But since I'm the number one guy, I don't have any competitors because why? I create ideas. I'm only interested in doing things that no one else is doing. Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, what was the biggest idea you ever made? That's a good question. Uh, hmm. Probably with, uh, rim repairs. Nobody was doing it. Think about it. You had millions of wheels around the world being thrown away every month. People buying two or three of the same wheel and throwing them away. So when I came up with a thing called rim repair, now there's huge industries running around here talking about rim repair specialists, rim repair gurus, rim repair this, and big industry. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. You want to fix them? I'm a guy who I really just build them. So if someone comes to me and say, hey, I want to put a turbo in this old Chevy, I put it there. I put it together for them. Me? Well, when I was in that industry, I made so much that I can't tell y'all about it. For tax purposes. <laughs> but no, on the real dog, you make seven and eight figures easily in this industry. If you're doing stuff that no one else is doing, and you know, hey, patent, trademark, and copyright. When I worked on a car, I was working to patent stuff. I want to create things that nobody's doing, so I want to make sure that everybody buys from me. But now I no longer restore cars. I go out and teach people about this business. That's why I'm here today, because we need more painters, more what? What else I need in this industry? Painters, welders, welders, painters, welders <laughs> body people, laborers, sandblasters, powder coaters, glass people. People know how to put glass in. People know how to do interior. People who basically know how to create. Excuse me? Interior, stereo shops. Anybody else? So I say this to say, this is a huge industry. So what I did is I stepped out of the industry because I started seeing cars that normally would take three months to be painted or put, to, put together, restored. Now it's taking up to four years. Anybody know why? People going on in bigger businesses. We got people coming in like, you guys familiar with Jay Leno? Yeah. Jay's Garage. How many cars Jay Leno got? He got a whole bunch of cars. You know, it's more Jay Leno's running around here. There's hundreds of Jay Leno's all around the world. Probably thousands of Jay Leno's. People who got garages with two and three hundred cars in them with no problem. So they come out and they find out that you're a good painter and a body man, and you know a lot about restoring cars. So they immediately say, "Hey, I'll give you a million dollars a year if you be my mechanic and build my cars for me only." Because I don't want to wait four years to restore my cars. I want you to just only work on my cars. Huge market. So that's making people who's working on cars say, you know what? I'd rather go with this guy. So now you got another shop that just closed there. 
Then you got the movie industry coming in and say, hey, I want 1059 Chevy convertibles so I can blow them all up. Like what? So now what's going to happen to the, the regular people who has cars sitting there? Now you got Hollywood come over here and say he's giving $5 million to build all 10 of these cars and I need them in um, three months. This guy's going to push all those regular people's cars outside. I'm only going to work on these 10 because I just made so much money. So that messed up the industry. Now you got cars and movies, TV shows, uh, commercials, videos, and these guys are very demanding because they see when you put a low rider inside of a TV show or a movie, immediately they do, they do more. They make more money because there, there's over 10 million low rider owners around the world globally. But there's probably 20, 30 million people who say, wow, that's unique. I like that. That's pretty cool. So this is definitely tied into STEM all day long. So these are things that you don't get to hear about. So that's why I'm here today to talk about it. It's important because welders, these guys are making a lot of money because you got people who come into that industry and say, well, hey, I got this old station wagon, but I was thinking I want to cut the top off of it and I want to put my boat, make it look like the back of my boat. Like, what? It's like, yeah, I just I want to make it look like the back of my boat. And I want to put a window here. So what am I doing now? Fabricating, I'm creating something that does not exist. This guy is leaving us a blank check, right? So you got a lot of people, a lot of welders who are going with these guys doing that. Then you got people who are doing paint and they're like, man, I want, I want it to be three, five, ten different colors. I want it to be like this. Oh, well, he got to take this paint guy with him. He painted. Next thing you know, he decided, well, I don't like to paint it over for me. Like, well, I made another 15 grand. He's like, okay, no problem here. It's so much money in this industry. We are running out of people to do the work. So I tell people all the time, you might not necessarily want to get a job in this industry. It's better to start your own business in this industry. I got people who are operating out of their parents' garages doing six figures a year, working in this industry, owning businesses. So this is why I came out today. I think I want everyone to know there are, there are a lot of options in the auto industry. Who knows where the biggest automotive state is in the world? Detroit. They sell more cars than any other state in the world. You say Detroit? Anybody else? California. Which freeway is the busiest, most traveled freeway in the world? Anybody know? Huh? What is it? No. No 106 in California. <laughs> the what? What state? California, the I-405 is the busiest freeway in the world. Why? Anybody know? Because they sell more cars in California than anywhere else on the planet. What, what car is named after California? Anybody know? You have a Jeep called in California? Okay, it's a California special. What other state has a car named after? None. <laughs> why, why would you name a car after a state? It's the number one state. The, car, the Ferrari California is one of the only cars with the direct name of the car. It's called the Ferrari California. That's a car. The California edition is a different saying that we sell these only in California. But why are they doing this? Because they know this is the biggest state for the auto industry, but yet there's not a lot of people taking car classes, automotive classes. Is that crazy or what? Meaning, we're learning things that we necessarily cannot get jobs in sometimes. But yet, the auto industry is booming and begging people to come help us with these cars. We got too many cars being restored and needing repair, but no one's going to school really to fix them. Huge industry. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Hiring educators? Excuse me. <laughs> you know what? We are creating a huge industry right now because I've been battling with the school districts saying, hey, y'all got to start putting auto body, painting, mechanic classes back in the schools. And they're looking at us kind of sideways like, yeah, whatever. But yeah, so I started a tour traveling around the world teaching these industries, doing exactly what I just did today, letting people know. So eventually we're going to start having schools that's teaching all these things, these trades that do not exist in schools right now.
how many locations do you have? And, and are any of them local? That I have? What do you mean? Or, well, yeah, you have. No, I don't have any. I don't have a, a shop anymore building so cars. Just, okay, so you, I'm just okay. a, I'm a public speaker, and I facilitate a lot of workshops okay. around the world. Meaning, I'll have a, a, a like I'll be in uh, Atlanta. I'm sorry. Where will I be? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be in, in Phoenix uh, and Arizona and on the fifth? And you know, I travel a lot, so I usually rent hotels or venues, go to schools, colleges, or co corporations, and talk to them about this industry. So I, I ask you that because um, part of what Mrs. Navarro and I do is we do um, work internships for some of our students. And a lot of times we're looking for businesses that will allow our students to work there. Well, we pay the salaries and they're covered for workers' comp. So we're always looking for businesses. And a lot of my students always say they want to do out of mechanics. So I would like to have, you know, if you know of any connections in the general area, maybe we can talk later, you can let us know. Um, any businesses that might be interested in having student workers and they kind of will pique their interest Absolutely. once they have a hands-on experience doing something like that. Absolutely, and that's very important. So I do know a lot of business owners, but being a business owner that ran a lowrider shop for like 20-something years is very important to know more than one thing. Right. So when you come in, I had people come in certified that had their degree or their certificate in auto mechanics, and that's all he knew was how to do tune-ups, how to do a head gasket. He didn't know how to drop the rear end out the back of the car. He didn't know how to pull the body off the frame. He didn't know where the screws were to pull the front end off the car. So we gotta start learning more than how to work on the car. We have to learn how to build cars. So that employee is valuable. If you can just start this car from the start to finish, you are worth so much money. You'll make an easy six figures a year doing that. Easy. If you come in saying, hey, I just want to, I can, I can come in and build your motor for you and, and do spark plugs and tune-ups, it's like, I'll give you 55, 60. But if you come in and say, hey, I can take that whole car apart, take it off the frame, get it ready for sandblasting, uh, and put it back together. I'm like, how much do you want? <laughs> you know, because you're a valuable commodity. I want to just be able to say, hey, I want to restore that 59 and walk away and come back. Five days from now, you'd be like, whoa, man, wow, cool, nice job. Okay, where we at now? Okay, waiting on the chrome plate to come back. I pay people take top dollar for guys like that. You got to have multiple skills. I also fired a guy because he was working on working at my shop and he was building motors and stuff for me in those, in those race cars. And all of a sudden, the lights went out. And I came back five hours later because I, I used to be in Palmdale at that particular shop. I went down to Los Angeles doing all my errands. I came back and he was sitting down. I said, well, what happened? He said, oh, the lights went out and we, we were sitting down. I mean, the lights went out, we couldn't work anymore. I walked back over to the breaker, <laughs> flipped the switch on, all the lights cut back on. And I'm like, you didn't know about this? He said, no, you're fired. <laughs> I can't use you if you don't know how, you, you gotta know about things. I can't, you, I think we need multitasking people. That's why it's important that we have uh, uh, automotive, uh, every student should know about automotive. They should all know about uh, woodwork, wood shops and things like that. They should all know about electricity. They should all know about, where am I at? Uh, this is just so many things that I learned in high school that I've never been to college, but yet I learned all of these things, so I took this and made money off of it. But it's important that we learn carpentry. We should know how to work, a, work, our, work our house. If the power goes off, the first place we start is the breaker, right? If this light doesn't come back on after we replace the bulb, we need to know. Maybe we should go check the breaker. Yes, ma'am. How many women are in this industry? There are a lot. No, I'm sorry. There are not a lot, but they are growing. Because they're seeing the wealth that's coming involved. But a lot of my friends have businesses. Their wives are the ones who do all the running around and the tracking down parts and going on the internet, finding parts or posting pictures of parts for sale. And dealing with the taxes and the paperwork, <laughs> you know? And setting up new social media accounts. So the children do specialize in social media. That's a huge thing about this industry. It's so, social media keeps changing. I remember when I got started, they kept telling me about this thing called the internet. I'm like, what's that? He's like, man, everybody's using it. There's this, this, this website on there. I'm like, what's the website? 
You know, in the 90s, it's like everything keeps changing and you got to learn about this stuff. I was having problems getting money back from Germany and Japan and Australia and New Zealand for the cars and the parts I sold. So I would all, I just figured it out. Every time I go into the bank and it says, I have a check, and it says Dus Bank of Dusseldorf, they would look at me crazy, like, okay, he's forging stuff. Now go ahead, that's the rest of this guy. <laughs> you know, uh, Bank of uh, Watanuka, Tennessee. They're like, come on, man, you're making this stuff up. But these are really banks in places that existed. So I realized that let me start making, telling people, I found out the post office has one money order. So I just started telling people, get me money order. But then someone told me, hey, dude, they got this thing called PayPal. It's an app that you put on your phone. I'm like, what's an app? <laughs> what's, what's a PayPal? Now, I've been around a long time. I should tell y'all, right? What's a, I was there when PayPal was first coming up. I said, well, you use it for a while, and if it works out for you, you let me know, and then I'll think about using it. Now it's standard. <laughs> you know, got to have that. But yeah, there's a lot of women who are who are eyeing in this industry. I used to have a woman welder work for me back in the day. She found out I was looking for some welders, and they were like, she quit her job working at some other place and came over there, and I was like, wow. Because she heard that you write your own check if you can do certain things. And that's what we got to learn. We got to stop trying to figure out what do we do and how much does this pay? Oh, this is a good job. It pays eighty thousand. Well, you know what? Eighty thousand is not a lot of money anymore. You guys paying attention? You know what gentrification means? Wait, how much time do I have? About five more minutes. Oh, okay. Real quick. Anybody know what gentrification is? Gentrification. Huh? Gentrification. Gentrification is a whole lot of new people moving into your area, paying a lot of money for your houses, pushing the price of real estate through the roof, making it very unaffordable for the people who used to live there. Poor people, regular people call it gentrification. Wealthy people call it redevelopment, meaning we're helping them out. Like you're not helping us pushing the rent from $1,000 a month to $3,000 a month. That's not help. That's hurting us. So that's happening in California. They have major corporations moving here. So fast forward the story. When you guys decide that you want a career to do, you got to ask how much is it going to pay? And if it's not paying over $100,000, you really don't want to look into that career. Why? Because houses are running a hundred thousand. I'm sorry, half a million. It takes a hundred and five thousand dollars to qualify for a half a million dollar house. Did you know that? So if the houses cost half a million, then that means the rent is going to be a certain amount of money. So if the rent is going to be high, that means the mortgage. I mean, if the mortgage is high, that means they're going to add more money onto it, and that's going to make the rents high. So if you can't afford to buy a house, which uh, mortgages are cheaper than the cost of a house, than it is to rent a house, I'm sorry. Basically what I'm saying is, it's very important. If you want to stay in the area that you grew up in or a nice area, you got to start thinking, can I afford to buy here? Because I see a lot of our college students going off to college and then when they come back, they're, they got a job that's going to pay them $60,000 or $80,000 a year and then they realize, I can't even afford to move in the neighborhood I grew up in. So I guess I'm going to move to Texas. I can buy a cheap house. So I noticed most college students are leaving the, leaving the state to live. But business owners are staying here. Why? Anybody know the difference? They make more money. They have more opportunities. Manufacturing, you come up with an idea, you can turn around and make it yourself and put it on Facebook or Instagram and sell it. Big difference. So I appreciate you guys coming out today. Anybody learn anything? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what y'all learned. talking about the various industries that's coming out that create money, meaning masonry, welding, uh, 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 brickwork, concrete work, carpentry is huge. So Thomas T.J. Lofton on all my social media, I'm always posting some new business ownership idea that I saw or some opportunity that I say, oh, so we should invest in this or this is a great place to buy a house at. This is a great place to do something. So if you go on social media or even my YouTube, please click like or follow. Anybody else learn anything today? Nobody learn anything? 
Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So then we're in the wrong place. <laughs> we just are wrong business. You inspired all the educators. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but I don't need you guys quitting tomorrow, though. <laughs> we need more teachers teaching the right thing. So help out and go back to the to the big guys in the, uh, in the corporate and tell them, hey, we need to start adding, putting auto mechanic, welding, uh, auto body, uh, electricity, and carpentry classes in these schools so that these young people can uh, start their own businesses. And then they can come back and say, hey, I want to donate a new building. 